Welcome to Transform Your Mind, Body, and Spirit with Lisa Dwoskin. Lisa has been a fitness professional for the past 20 years, as well as a fitness competitor. She's now a life coach and is ready to help educate and guide you with nutrition, exercise techniques, and positive mindset. You're invited to call in and ask Lisa any question about how you can jumpstart your very own transformation and become a better you. Call toll-free 1-800-889-0267. Visit her website at lisadwoskin.com or visit her on Facebook at BBL Fitness. Do you want to be healthier, happier, and live a longer and more fulfilled life? Then get ready to transform your mind, body, and spirit and to emerge a new you. Now here's Lisa. Hello, welcome to Transform Your Mind, Body, Spirit. Thank you for joining me today on 94.3 FM. And that is also 12.30 AM. Right, Freddie? Yes, that's 12.30 WB. Congratulations, Lisa. Thank you, thank you. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Today is a day filled with love, and my show is going to be all about love. And not just about love for a significant other, but love, universal love, spiritual love, divine love, unconditional love. And most importantly is self-love. Without self-love, you cannot love another, and you have nothing. You have to love yourself. That's what the theme of my show will be about. And how do you love yourself? Do you guys know? I have a room full of about six people in here. How do you love yourself? By being kind to yourself. By eating good, whole food, nutritious food. Whole Foods is my favorite store. By exercising, by feeding your mind with positive thoughts. I love that, and I talk about that a lot in my book, which is Metamorphosize. You can buy my book at lisadwaskin.com. That's L-I-S-A-D-W-O-S-K-I-N.com or on Amazon. And I would just like to read something from my book about loving yourself, being kind to yourself, believing in yourself, and you will achieve greatness. Let go and let God or what other, whatever higher being you believe in. We're not going to discuss religion on this show, but let go and let the universe guide you. Be in the moment. Live in the moment. Be kind to others. Imagine what you want out of life and make it happen. Find your truth and release your fears. The power we are seeking is within us. Free yourself from anger, fear, guilt, bitterness, and forgive. Forgiveness is a very important thing we're going to be talking about. And last, my favorite quote is from Wayne Dyer, who was a friend of mine, a mentor of mine, who said, What others think of you is none of your business. So don't worry about what anybody thinks about you. Just be happy. Choose happiness over sadness. Live in the moment. Be here. And always, always choose happiness. So here we go. On to my first guest. I'm so excited to have him here today. He's a very, very special friend of mine. He's like a family member of mine. I've known him over 15 years. And last night I was Googling about him, and this is what they say about him. He is the greatest superstar in WWE history, a legend, a trailblazer, the greatest fighter and boxer and wrestler out there, Hall of Famer, Mr. Rocky Johnson. Yay! Welcome thank you, to the Lisa. Show. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Yay. I really enjoy this, and thank you for the compliment. Thank you uh, for I've being here. I never considered here. myself a superstar. I just considered myself one of God's children. I was very lucky in life, and I produced a great son, and I'm very <laughs> happy. I read your book many times. I, I really think it helped me. I have no bitterness in my heart. I have nothing but love. If somebody doesn't love me or like me, they have the problem, not me. I wake up every morning liking myself. Yeah. I have a beautiful wife, Sheila. We get along great. Which is right over Which here in the oh, corner. Yeah. <laughs> she won't let me go any place by myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love Sheila. So, Rocky, you and I always talk about gratitude, being grateful and being here in the moment. Talk to us about your childhood and and you had struggles, you had many trials and tribulations. How did you find gratitude and how were you so thankful when you uh, didn't have much? I, I left home 
when I was 14 years old, I don't want to get into why I left, but anyway, I left. I hitchhiked from Nova Scotia to Toronto. I got yeah. a job in a car wash, 90 cents an hour. Yeah. I, I could train at Trinity Recreation Center because it was free. I had a little hole, and I knew there was something bigger. And I, I just didn't know what it was, so I, I explored many things. I played hockey, I did this, and then I started amateur boxing. I became pretty good, actually, without bragging. Won Golden Gloves twice in a year, uh, light heavyweight and heavyweight. Then I went into pro boxing. Then I struggled. And mm. then uh, I watched wrestling one night, and I met this friend of mine who was wrestling. He said, let me show you a couple holes, and I got hooked on it. Yeah. And I spent the rest of my life in professional wrestling. No, when you say you were struggling in boxing, what happened? It wasn't for you? It, it, it was and it wasn't. I wasn't making the money they're making a day. I was making $50 a round, uh. and, and my manager was making $500 a round, uh. and I was I was taking all the punches. Well, so I knew I there had to be something better out there. Yeah. And I had a lot of promises that were never kept. Right. And, I, and after about two years, I seen it. And I started... I turned professional when I was, I'll say this now, I couldn't say it then, I was 17 years old, and you had to be 18 years old to have a license, so I lied and said I was 18, oh, and wow. I got my license, and I had a good record, hmm. and I probably could have won places, but you know, it, when you, you look around, and I, for some reason, I, I felt that I was being kept back. But the reason was, I still don't know to this day, they were coming in and telling me, kid, you're going to be world champion someday. In other words, I'm, I'm leaving the ring with black eyes, nose bleeding and everything. Now, when they told you that, did you know as a young child that you were meant for greatness? Did yes, you feel I, something I, I like had that? that? I had that feeling. I yeah. knew. I Tell had, us about that. I had that in my heart that there was something big out there for me. Yeah. But I think whether you want to say God or whether you want to say a, a bean or something, something was telling me, you haven't hit your peak yet. Go find it. I and it was that. a hard, hard struggle. Yeah. But I never gave up. And then when I got into the wrestling and I went to the South, it was very hard in those days. Mm -hmm. And I became, broke all records of becoming the first black, or if you want to call it Afro-American, uh, a champion. I held 58 belts yeah, in 38 years. That. Again, I don't want to get the point that saying I'm bragging. What I'm saying is ABC, anybody can if they want to. Yeah. But don't expect it to be handed to you. Mm. I mean, I've been hit so hard that I couldn't let the shower hit my chest. Or if that's, but I never quit and never gave up. I started with a friend of mine, and he tells me to this day, I wish I had to kept it up. He quit. I didn't. Right, and that's what I love about you. Not only did you have the feeling, you had the belief in I yourself. I believed in myself, and yes. I knew there was something there. At that right. time, I didn't know what it was, Yeah. but I knew there was something. And you were in tune with your inner voice, your intuition. I was intuition. in tune with it every day. And you also were very into faith and gratitude. Yeah, that's what kept me going. Was and I think that's why you were so driven and the reason why you didn't give up. Because when you have a faith and when you have that inner voice inside of you, you follow it. Right. You believe in when it. When I read the books and watched the matches or watched the box or whatever it did, I said, if they can do it, what's stopping me? Right. Right. And that gave me the drive, and I read, and I studied, and I practiced by myself. I think a lot of times I practiced in my room. If they had to see me, they'd have probably put me in the nut house thinking I was goofy. <laughs> but yeah. I had that drive, and I still have that drive today, yeah. that I work with kids, and I, I, I help many people as I can. Well, and I think when you give back... I'm giving back. Of Ooh, course, I, I so then good things happen to you. Good thing, right. So let's talk about in 2008, you were, uh, you went into the Hall of Fame. Right. I and was, your son was the one who presented it yeah, to you, right? Yeah, my boy. That the, must the have rock, made you yeah. feel great, and him. I think uh, my last match is the greatest match that will go down in history. It was in the Bahamas, and it was father and son. Oh, I have a picture of that on the yes, website. Yes, and that was the greatest thing. And, and that's when I passed the gavel on to him. Aww. But I, would, I wouldn't give anything for that match. That well, and match. imagine how proud he is of and you. I imagine how many guys in this business can say, I had a match with my son, 
No, oh, of my course. Partner. And that was when? What year? That was around. Do you remember? I can't remember the year. Oh, okay. When you get my age, I can't remember what happened yesterday. How old were you about? How? What was the I age? quit when I was in the 40s. Oh, okay. And he was in the 20s. And you started when you were in your 20s? 30s? I started 17. at 18 years old. No, but I mean, you started with WWE when you were Yeah, I started old. with them in, uh, I think, around 79, 80. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Oh, that must have been great. Okay, so uh, callers, if we need any, we want callers, one 800 889-0267. Call us. You could ask Rocky a question. You could ask my brother Danny a question. Sheila's over here. Yeah. Sheila's <laughs> waiting for somebody to ask her a question. Whole group of people in here. Okay. I, I, I got a question that came in on the text for the Rock. Oh, okay. um, when you were wrestling, I got to see you. I'm a little older than everybody in here, but I got to see you when you wrestled. Name some of the names that came up and actually made wrestling what it is today you you were the dusty rose harley rays rick flair jack briscoe jerry briscoe i mean I these are go. the people that were that were brought up while you they were the, almost the champions when yeah. i when i started yes man it's an amazing thing how you sort of just and everybody I, loves it now yeah you see the crowds now compared to back then oh compared to back to them now we're doing wrestlemania in in april in dallas texas and we're expecting the biggest crowd in history, 135,000 people. Wow. And that's not wow. counting our paid review. Our paid review goes all over the world. All over the world. I yeah. know, because I've paid plenty of paid reviews. Oh, yeah. My kids used to watch this stuff uh, ridiculously all the time. Oh, it's great. It's just gotten bigger and bigger as it is. Yes. You know, and, and then they have the, the lunchbox promos and everything else that goes with that. And yeah, yeah, everything, yeah. It's just phenomenal. It is. Okay, Danny, my brother has a question for you. Yeah, come on. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, I, I want to see. Danny's a co-host today of the show. No, no, I just want to say Blackjack Mulligan, rest in peace. And I want to and I want to ask Rocky how he stays so healthy cuz so many good wrestlers have passed on. Yeah, well, that's a the great is, question. The thing is with there, there and that goes with, with reading Lisa, Lisa's book. This is even before I met Lisa. A lot of them they spend 20 years in the business, they train every day and then they say, "Hey, I'm retired, I quit." And they quit working out. Yeah. And watch what they they don't watch what they eat. I'm in the gym clanging and banging yeah. six days a week. Mind you, there's no more 500-pound bench presses. I don't need that at my age. Right. I'm in there doing exercises. I'm riding a Cumberland bike. I hit my punching bag every day. I, I watch. Uh, Tell you know, us my about posture. your food, what yeah, you I, get I, I, uh, We have uh, Whole Foods delivered to us, yeah. 18 meals every three days. And I eat good. I think a lot of them, like uh, a lot of football players, and I'm not going to mention his name, but he's a good friend of yours too. Uh, I remember when he was in great, great shape. Now he weighs like 350 pounds. I said, man, why don't you lose weight? You're going to have a heart attack. He's a rocket. I played football for 18 years. I was forced to go to training camp. I was forced to work out. Now I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And I said, in five years, you're going to be dead. No, but Which actually, he has lost 30 pounds. Yeah, but he's still got a lot more <laughs> to go. But you want to know why? His best friend died. Yeah, of I'm a scared of him, but he's still got a lot heart, more to go. Heart, right. yeah, I get, uh, I get uh, two checkups a year where yeah. they take uh, two to seven tubes of blood. They check everything. Right. I'm not saying I'm in great shape, but I feel good, and I'm, I'm up the weight I want to be. Yeah. No, and you look great. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about training. When Dwayne wanted to stop playing football, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, obviously everyone knows, is his son. We all love Dwayne and Rocky. So when he decided to stop playing football and become a wrestler, he wanted you to train him, and what did you tell him? I, I tried to discourage him because nowadays it's different. I didn't want him to go through what I had to go through. Right. With all the racial prejudice and all yeah. the stuff that I had to go through, I, I said no. What had happened? He played for Calgary. He got cut, and they called him back. And he go. I said, "Are you going back?" He said, "No." I said, "You're throwing your life away." He said, yeah. "No, I want to get it in the business because his grandfather was a wrestler too." Right. I said, "Okay, I'll train you, but I'm going to train you 150 percent." And this is a funny story because yeah. I took him to the gym. And I was really, really, really hard on him. I said, if you want to throw up, go outside. And if you want sympathy, go home to your mother. And that's what he did. He walked a mile and a half home. Oh, wow. And then told his mother I was trying to kill him. And she, <laughs> and she wouldn't speak to me for two days. <laughs> but then he come and I wouldn't well, speak to him. Then I, tough, and, I wouldn't, and I wouldn't talk to him. 
Then yeah. he came and said, can I talk to you? And I said, yeah. He said, I see what, what's going on, and I was wrong, and I apologize. Yeah. And the rest is history. He became six-time WWE World Champion. Amazing. So let's talk about the three generations. You were talking about his grandfather, right. your father-in-law. Right. Now, we have a name. You were named a high chief. A Samoan high chief. A Samoan. Yeah, because, talk uh, about that. That's his amazing. His mother was a, a princess. Uh-huh. His father was a high, his grandfather was a high chief. Mm -hmm. His grandmother was a queen. Wow. So being in that family, they made me uh, a Samoan chief, which is in the Guinness World Records. I'm the first non-Samoan ever to become a Samoan chief. That's amazing. So yeah. when you had like a whole ritual. And oh, they, yeah, everything. I oh, that must back, have been yeah. so amazing. Oh, yeah. We, it was now a talk big, about spiritual people. They're very, very spiritual. Extremely. Extremely. Yes. I I've learned quite that. a bit from them. Oh, I'm And I sure. learned a lot about being around the world, being in Africa, France, Belgium, Simone. I learned about different cultures. Now, is Dwayne, does he take that very seriously Oh, yeah, as he's well? a chief, too. He has a tattoo. That's what it is. I didn't want to get the tattoo. Oh, okay. But he's very spiritual, too, as extremely, well. Extremely. He, yes, he's extremely I spiritual. love all his articles are always about mind, body, spirit. Right. And we're both he's graduates. He's at 4 o'clock in the morning yeah. working out. Then six, I love Then 6 o'clock, he's on the set. No, it's amazing. And I think it goes back to what you said. Everybody has to have drive in them, ambition in them. Right. If they give up, they're going to fail. But if right. you keep on pushing, no matter what, you will succeed. Yeah, sooner or later. And you know, It's not handed to you on a silver platter. Exactly. Like, peop like people think. Right. You have to work for it. You have to want it. And even when you get it, like your son, he's at the pinnacle of his career. I mean, right. he's amazing. He's still waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning, morning to work, work out. out. And be on He's the set at 6. All day. So it's yeah. all about working hard, right. keep driving, right. keep believing, having the faith. He, he's amazing. He doesn't, so think he, he doesn't think he reached his peak yet. Maybe he hasn't. I don't know. Yeah. Well, he probably could even yeah. go higher. Yeah, he's, yeah. Sky's the limit. It's That's amazing right. what he's doing. Now, would you say that you owe it to yourself? His career or him? <laughs> we talk uh, about this I a only, lot. I can say I took him to the water. I didn't make him drink it. Yeah. But you, I, but you I, died I, I would in like him. to say, like he says, dad, my dad was a pioneer. Yes. I paved the road. And I love, I, uh, Freddie, I saw, I think I sent it to you, a video of his son I with the that. ballers. Yes. And he was wearing his dad's shirt that said the soul man, Rocky yeah. Johnson. And that touches me, my heart because yeah, mine too. family's everything. And right. he's got very good core values. Very and big. so do you. But you grew up, your father died when you were 12. 12 years old. You I left never the had house. a father, right. I left at 14. So where did you get these values from? They were just in... They were in... They were implanted in me, maybe from my father. I don't know. Wow. I really never got to know him because I was 12 years old. Yeah, but that's amazing because usually you learn about But I was never parents. bitter, never mad, never upset. I had bad days. I had bad lives. I mean, when I first started, you know, working in a car wash for 90 cents an hour. Yeah, wow, uh, amazing. But you always had faith? I, were you religious or was it just spirituality? Spiritual. Well, I don't know what you call religious, but I had the spiritual. But what religion were you? What, what were you brought up? Were you where, religious? Where, I was brought up in the AME Church after okay. the Methodist Episcopal. But but then you just became spiritual. I just became spiritual within what was. I knew there was something inside of me. I yeah. had a guidance uh -huh. inside of me. I don't know what it was, but it was telling me, you can, you can. It will wake me up at night telling me, you can yeah. do better. But you, that's your you inner can, voice, your intuition. And, that's, and I listened. And that's great. And you read it in my book. And that's what all my shows are going to be about is how to people get into, how could they get in tune within themselves through meditation, through journaling, through reading positive affirmations, right. not You can read anything news. you want, but the key is you have to believe in yourself. Believe in And yourself. you have to want it. Of course. And go after it. You yeah. know, it's like I was talking with your brother, Danny. He has horses. I have horses. Right. I always wanted to be a jockey. How am I going to be a jockey? No, Six foot two, two hundred and seventy-five pounds. <laughs> you know. So. Yeah. But I let that go, and I knew there was something else there for me. Yeah. And regrets. I have very few. Yeah, and that's beautiful. So I think we're taking a commercial break. We'll be right back with the legend, the great Rocky Johnson. If 
you're a golfer or just someone who wants the best hotel stay in South Florida, your wish has been answered. Introducing the Grand Palms Hotel Spa and Golf Resort. The Grand Palms Hotel Spa and Golf Resort, located in beautiful South Florida, gives everyone the opportunity to enjoy peace, beauty, and tranquility. 137 comfortable rooms and suites located on a 27-hole golf course with all the amenities that you'd expect of a first-class golf facility, a professional golf pro shop, excellent restaurant equipped with a full-service bar, and a staff that is ready to cater to your every whim. The Grand Palms Hotel Spa and Golf Resort is paradise waiting for you. The Grand Palms is truly a golfer's paradise. The golf course surrounded by luxurious homes and the most exquisite landscaping in the area. You might even catch a glimpse of some celebrity golfers swinging their golf clubs. Whether you're an avid golfer or just coming to the area for business or relaxation, you won't find a more comprehensive resort experience for the value. Located minutes from South Florida's famed beaches and some of the best shopping in the country, there's something for everyone at the Grand Palm Spa and Golf Resort. If you're looking to book a wedding, party, or speaking engagements, this this is the place for you. Grand Palms Catering is the best in town, with gorgeous and spacious garden rooms and clubhouses overlooking the golf course. Grand Palms is the best kept secret in Pembroke Pines. Call today, 954-431-8800, and book your reservation to one of the most beautiful golf resorts in Florida. 954-431-8800 is the number you need to enjoy a touch of paradise for your getaway. Hi, my name is Lisa Dwoskin, and you can purchase my book, Metamorphosize, on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, or on my very we got Jonathan J. Dog Letterman on line one. Dot com. Metamorphosize is about the transformation within, the journey from the caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly. This book is a memoir of my personal journey of becoming spiritually enlightened and emerging into my new true self. In it, I discuss many challenges and losses that I have faced and worked through along the way. Challenges that have helped me to grow into a better person. Life is filled with trials and tribulations. How we handle these challenges molds us into the people that we become. In my book, I also will teach my readers how to help themselves and learn to become healthier and happier. My good friend Rocky Johnson and his son Dwayne The Rock Johnson both endorse the back cover of my book. Dwayne states, All of my life I have been an athlete and believed in the balance of mind, body, and spirit. Without having all three in proper alignment, I would not have achieved what I have in my life. I often speak to everybody about maintaining a positive mindset, eating healthy, exercising, and balancing your life. I feel that Lisa's journey will help awaken the lives of many and inspire others to begin their own transformation. Her book is sensational and very uplifting. Thank you, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So look for my book, Metamorphosize, on Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com, or LisaDwoskin.com. Again, that's spelled Lisa, D-W-O-S-K-I-N.com. Are you ready to transform your life? Are you wanting to lose weight, become healthier, and feel happier? I am here to help you do just that. My name is Lisa Dwoskin. I'm a personal trainer and a life coach. I educate on transforming the mind, body, spirit from within. I want to teach you how to eat healthy, exercise daily, and feed your mind with positive thoughts. You can hire me one-on-one -on -one for coaching, personal training, or how to learn about nutritious foods and how they affect your body in a more positive way. Sign up for my free weekly newsletter at lisadwaskin.com. Or you can find me on Facebook at Body by Lisa or BBL Fitness is my Facebook page. I post daily tips on nutrition, fitness, and feeding your mind with positive thoughts. Don't wait for tomorrow to become healthier and happier. Do it today. My website again is lisadwaskin.com. That's D-W-O-S-K-I-N.com. You are transforming your mind, body, and spirit with fitness professional and life coach, Lisa Dwoskin. You can call in at any time, toll free, 1-800-889-0267 to speak with Lisa. Now, let's get back to this week's show. Okay, we're back, and we have a caller on the line. 
And after we take the collar, we're going to talk about Muhammad Ali and the tap dancing you used to do with him. <laughs> okay, so here's our caller, Jonathan Letterman. Are you there? Jonathan, Hello. you're on the air. Hi, uh, Lisa and Rocky. This is uh, Jonathan J. Dog Letterman. Hope everything's going great with you guys today. Hi, uh, how are you? I am doing great. And you guys were, you know, talking about, you know, following your passion and following your dreams. And I was very moved. And I uh, teach a, a equation. It's called passion plus action equals success. And uh, I know, Lisa, you recently signed up for the uh, American Cash Society Relay for Life uh, to be held in Boca Raton right. on, uh, on April 16th at the Omni Middle School from uh, 5 p.m. to 11. And uh, we're very happy that you're able to uh, come out and, and bring what you bring to, uh, to Relay. And, you know, having the opportunity to talk to Rocky, um, I'm like a little kid in a candy store right now. <laughs> the, the, the memories, not only what he did in the ring, but a lot of people don't know, Rocky did a lot of things outside the ring that went under the radar. Mentoring, mentoring kids, raising funds for charity, uh, being very, very involved with the uh, youth programs in uh, the Davy area. And I want to applaud Rocky because he used his platform to do great things. And he didn't do it based on ego. He understood that ego is edging God out. So I just wanted to thank Rocky for that, and I wanted to thank uh, you, Lisa, for all that you're doing to get people in tune with the mind-body-soul connection. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, go ahead, thanks, Rocky. thanks very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I do work with a lot of uh, organizations. I work with underprivileged kids. Uh, I try to give back what I got. And uh, I, right now, I've got some kids I'm working with. I, t I teach a boxing class, of, you know, self-defense and stuff like that. I like working, you know, with Cancer Society. Uh, uh, when I lived in Tampa, I had 37 Down Syndrome children I work with. And I really enjoy doing that stuff. That's beautiful. And I wanna, I wanna call, I'm going to call Rocky out because he, uh, he used a word that we should never use on our, our spiritual journey and that's the word try that's right Rocky, i agree with you you. Are, you are not trying you are doing that's you right you are doing i, yeah, I appreciate and, uh, that that's the message we can deliver out to the, the general public um you know that it's doing there there's no try um lisa in your book you talk about you know the, the weight reduction and weight release i like the fact that you don't call it weight loss um because when we lose things we have a tendency to go look for them Right. So somebody says, I'm trying to lose weight. Well, they're setting themselves up for self-sabotage. Rocky, when you got into the ring, did you say, I'm going to try to win? No, no I said I was said, going to. I'm going to win. <laughs> That's right. That's very true. You're right. You're 100% right. It's the same thing. Uh, uh, I was, Lisa knows about this. I got bucked off my horse, and I broke my shoulder, and I gained a lot of weight. And I said, I'm going to lose 50 pounds, and I ended up losing 63 pounds. I didn't say I was going to try. I said, I'm going to, and I did it. And that goes back to what we were talking about, believing in yourself right. is everything. Loving yourself, believing in yourself, and just moving forward. I love that, Jonathan. Thank but, you. But I can't well, believe in myself. I can't believe in anybody else. No, of course. But there's and, so and many Lisa, people. If it would be okay, if I could just uh, give a, a quick plug to Relay for Life and encourage your, uh, your listeners to... Uh, visit the website and to look up your name and to start making donations. Okay, and before you give the plug, let me just talk about that a little bit. It's for the American Cancer Society. We're all about charity. And Rocky's going to be signing off some dolls or maybe some memorabilia from the WWE. Right. And I also told you I have a couple footballs from Lawrence Taylor. So go ahead, give the plug. When is it? Okay. Time, date, uh, please? The, the American Cancer Society Relay for Life of Boca Raton is going to happen on April 16th from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. at the Omni Middle School in Boca Raton. Um, our theme is Passport for the Cure. So all of our teams are going to be picking different countries to uh, represent and do some on-site fundraising. We're going to have entertainment. We're going to have kids' activities. As you mentioned, Rocky's going to come out and uh, make an appearance. Oh, so he's coming out. You're coming out. Yeah, yeah. Bring it I out. I love you. Sweet. 
All right, thank and, you. I appreciate yeah. and I love your words and of encouragement. Let me, the, let me give you the website so they can okay, go, go ahead. to your team. It's <laughs> uh, www.relayforlife.org slash Boca Raton FL. When you get there, just search for Lisa Dwarfson and uh, click on our metamorphosized team and you can donate to her team. And I'm looking forward to seeing you and Rocky and anybody else that you can bring out to Omni Middle School on the 16th of April from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. We'll be there. Excellent. Uh, Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. Take care. You too. God bless. Okay, so let's start talking about Muhammad Ali. What do you were want to you, know? Were you a dancer with him, and did you wear a tutu, or did you tap dance, or well, what yeah, was the, the deal? yeah, the tutu won't fit me no more. <laughs> no, I met him in Toronto when I was boxing. He was still Cassius Clay. Okay. And uh, we're in a gym one day, sparring, fooling around. So we had the, the tape on uh, James Brown, Night Train. Oh, I love it. So that. we put a piece of plywood down, and we started t- t- tap dancing. I used to go out in the barn when I was a kid and tap and step. Yeah. I learned my I learned it myself. Nobody taught me. But that's so, great. Yeah. So we started shuffling, tapping and and he went on and uh he fought George Chavella and then he went on Miami and he beat Sonny Liston and he called it the Ollie Shuffle. So yeah. when I went into wrestling I called it the Rocky Shuffle. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I was just with his so wife. Who taught uh, who? He huh? taught you or you taught him? I don't want to say I taught him, but I, I was the one that, <laughs> I don't want to blow my own horn. That's but we okay. learned together, he was a great guy, he's a great friend, he's a good man, he's done everything possible, and uh, he's very well known, and I have nothing but respect for him. I was with his wife, uh, yeah, uh, the other not, day. not dating her, I was with no, his wife at a, a function. charity, right. That just shared the event mm. uh, two weeks ago, and they they were auctioning off things, and Concho, Moncho, the, the fighter, uh, they auctioned off his boxing gloves, and right. I won him. Oh, so awesome. I got him in my office, yeah, because he had great. passed away a couple years ago. Yeah. Camacho did the dance too, right? Yeah, he did, but he did his own he version. He did his own version. They all tried to follow, uh, even uh, I lived 20, when I had a home in Pennsylvania, I lived 20 miles from Larry Holmes. Uh, Mike Tyson is a personal friend of mine. He visits my home here and everything. But they all tried to had their own version. Yeah, but they couldn't get it. No. Sugar because, Ray also did it. Yeah, dance. but they still couldn't get it because they all tried to go with the heel and the toe. You had to go with the heel. You had to go with the toe and the heel See, first. you had to teach him. Why? <laughs> because everybody was trying to... And the thing was, he never took a lesson, and and I didn't either. But I bored, 10, 11 years old. I go to the horse barn. We had a wood down. And I put the music on. And I, I could I could tap and I could step. Well, and that helps you with wrestling, it helped boxing, me with, all, with it flexibility. Me, yeah. I was my flexibility. Of I was course, fast. with the core. Right. I was really heavy on, on a seat, but I was fast on my feet. I love it. What, okay. what about George Foreman? You used to spar with him, I was, right? Yeah, I was one of his sparring partners in Hayward, California. I lived not too far from him. My boy was born in Hayward, and he would come to my house. And my boy was like three, four years old, and my boy was scared to death of him because uh, he would go, Rrr. Oh, yeah. Just to tease him. But he's you know. a nice guy. Very nice guy. Very nice man. Went on. He had a rough life, too. Yeah. And he went on to be the heavyweight champ of the world. That's great. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, we have another caller. Sifu Dave is on the phone. Sifu Dave. <laughs> Sifu Dave, you're Are on you the there? Air. Not disconnected. Oh, huh? he got disconnected? Good. Call us back, seafood. Seafood Dave. Dave. You know Hello, seafood. Hello. Well, we, we can go. We can go there Hi for there. seafood. Seafood, oh, wait, you there? There he is. We hear him. Hello. I'm here, Lisa. Good to talk to you on your radio show. And uh, Rocky, uh, had to call in with your Muhammad Ali story. Congratulations, by the way, on everything you've done. Your story's a phenomenal one. I followed it. Thank you. I appreciate that. And and you were talking about Muhammad Ali. You know, uh, gosh, it was Lisa was about. 10 or 13 years ago when Taibo really exploded. And I, of course, competed against Billy Blanks in, in Kumite kickboxing when I was much younger, you know, much younger, younger than Billy. Right. And uh, he did Taibo, and they were going to launch Taibo 2.0, as Lisa knows. And uh, and they, Billy actually recommended me for this uh, new age, holistic life co-synergy, with life, you know, mind, body, spirit stuff that Lisa is... Uh, you know, promoting so much now down here in South Florida for everybody. 
And uh, they flew me first class back from L.A. to New York. And right next to me was Muhammad Ali, the greatest, your yeah, buddy. Yeah, he was the greatest, and he still is. And oh, I wow. believe he makes his mind over conversation that. about everybody from Bruce <clears throat> Lee. Of course, I got to train with Bruce Lee's son, Brandon. But, uh, and just a phenomenal guy. And he was, he was there, very there, despite his Parkinson's, you know. Right. He was very lucid and clear. And I remember, as a courtesy, when we got off the plane, we got luggage, I carried his bag for him, and it was a big, heavy, gosh, it, it must have weighed, you know, 60, 70 pounds. And uh, I carried it for him. And then when he, we departed, we took a couple pictures together. When, when he departed, he, he took it from me with a couple of fingers like it was nothing, it, right. you know. <laughs> it, 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 and I, I think I'm a pretty strong guy, you know. But And I shook his hand. It felt like, it felt like, like bones wrapped in steel cable still. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Train so, for that, right. So I have a question. Who will be who? Him or Rocky? <laughs> no, him. Gee, I don't know. Rocky's pretty well-rounded, you know. But Rocky, you know, I, I, don't think, I don't think Ali's much of a grappler. And now, you know, with the advent of MMA, which, you know, we used to call mixed martial arts, Kung Fu before there was such a thing as MMA. It was Kung Fu. It was everything. Now, did you but, ever do any Rocky, any Kung Fu martial arts or just I took mainly? Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was a black belt. My boys are second down. Oh, wow. That's yeah, amazing. Oh, that's important. great. That amazing. Well, I had to call in and, and commend you for what you're doing. I'll be there to support the the cancer event on April 16th um, and, and your good work with, with that, Lisa and Rocky. So well, Thank you for calling. And before oh, we hang up, Dave was a martial artist and uh, he does like levitating things. Oh, he very he good. moved to Tibet and lived there for a while. So he does pretty cool stuff. I do so levitate you too him. every time I follow the bed. <laughs> he wants to levitate you, Rocky. Yeah. Hey, Danny's here too. Say hi, Dan. <laughs> How you doing, Dan? Hey, Dan. Dan. Bless you, buddy. We got to see you Dan. levitate something one day. Right. Oh, <laughs> all right, God. Dave. Thanks for calling in. Bless you all. Take thanks. care. Thanks. God bless. Uh, that's great. Okay, let's talk about meditation. Do you believe in meditation? And do you meditate? I do to a certain degree, yeah. Okay, now, you know, meditation can be done the way we did it at my seminar, mm -hmm. which you got really into it. I was yeah, very yeah. happy. Or you can meditate by playing golf. You probably meditate when you ride horses or train I, horses. I do. When I'm training and riding, yes, I do. Yeah, and I think that's what people out there need to understand mm -hmm. about meditation. It's not just about sitting, sitting in a there, position, learning right? with, right, with your candles and yeah, the room and dark. Chanting. Yeah, It could no. be about anything when that I'm you're When I'm with my horses, about. I meditate all the time. Now, your horses, you have how many now? We have uh, two here and, and seven or nine. Seven or nine? nine. Yeah, I have nine in Missouri. Oh, okay. We have a, a, a ranch in uh, Steele, Missouri. Now, you actually ride the horses or train the horses or do a little... I, I ride. I do a little both. I like to get them like, when they're 11, 12 months old and play with them, try to break them myself. Now, the, most of the horses you ride have to be, what, 17, 18 hands? No, I'm not that strong. big. I, well, I, I'm 5'10", and my horse was yeah, 17 and a half Yeah, mine's 16, hands. 17, yeah. Yeah, I like the big I got horses. a Belgium stud that's 2,100 oh, 20, pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing, amazing. And horseback that's, riding is amazing. Yeah, I can meditate when I go for a ride up in the Because our farm is all on a dirt road. Yeah. And it's nothing but, uh, we have 220 acres that we lease out. And I just go ride and just go off into the sunset. So that's your form of meditation. That's, my form that's of your meditation. passion, yes, you're peaceful. That's my, I'm just so at mind, so peaceful, just like I'm floating. That's great. Now, when you retired, did you feel a little bit lost? Like you didn't know lost. what you were going to do? I was lost. I don't consider myself retired today. Okay. I still work with the WWE. Well, I still, yeah. I, I still do. The only th difference is I do it the way I want to do it now. Exactly. And we're going to take another break. But when we get back from the break, we're going to talk about your three books coming up, your movie that's coming up, and how what you're going to be doing with your life since you're not retired. We'll be right back. If you're a golfer or just someone who wants the best hotel stay in South Florida, your wish has been answered. Introducing the Grand Palms Hotel Spa and Golf Resort. The Grand Palms Hotel Spa and Golf Resort, located in beautiful South Florida, gives everyone the opportunity to enjoy peace, beauty, and tranquility. 
137 comfortable rooms and suites. Freddy. On a 27 Some guy keeps calling. He's like, I can't get the station. I'm like, it's 94.3. He's like, you sure it's on? I'm like, it's on. He must not be in the range for the antenna is what I'm thinking. Ready to cater to your every whim. The Grand Palms Hotel, Spa, and Golf Resort is paradise waiting for you. The Grand Palms is truly a golfer's paradise. The golf course surrounded by luxurious homes and the most exquisite landscaping in the area. You might even catch a glimpse of some celebrity golfers swinging their golf clubs. Whether you're an avid golfer or just coming to the area for business or relaxation, you won't find a more comprehensive resort experience for the value. Located minutes from South Florida's famed beaches and some of the best shopping in the country, there's something for everyone at the Grand Palm Spa and Golf Resort. If you're looking to book a wedding, party, or speaking engagements, this is the place for you. Grand Palms Catering is the best in town, with gorgeous and spacious garden rooms and clubhouses overlooking the golf course. Grand Palms is the best-kept secret in Pembroke Pines. Call today, 954-431-8800, and book your reservation to one of the most beautiful golf resorts in Florida. 954-431-8800 is the number you need to enjoy a touch of paradise for your getaway. Hi, my name is Lisa Dwoskin, and you can purchase my book, Metamorphosize, on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, or on my very own website, lisadwoskin.com. Metamorphosize is about the transformation within, the journey from the caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly. This book is a memoir of my personal journey of becoming spiritually enlightened and emerging into my new true self. In it, I discuss many challenges and losses that I have faced and worked through along the way. Challenges that have helped me to grow into a better person. Life is filled with trials and tribulations. How we handle these challenges molds us into the people that we become. In my book, I also will teach my readers how to help themselves and learn to become healthier and happier. My good friend Rocky Johnson and his son Dwayne The Rock Johnson both endorse the back cover of my book. Dwayne states, All of my life I have been an athlete and believed in the balance of mind, body, and spirit. Without having all three in proper alignment, I would not have achieved what I have in my life. I often speak to everybody about maintaining a positive mindset. Begin their own transfer book is and very uplifting. Thank you, Dwayne Johnson. So look for my book, Metamorphosize, on Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble.com, or LisaDwaskin.com. Again, that's spelled Lisa D W O. S. Are you ready to transform your life? Are you wanting to lose weight, become healthier, and feel happier? I am here to help you do just that. My name is Lisa Dwoskin. I'm a personal trainer and a life coach. I educate on transforming the mind, body, spirit from within. I want to teach you how to eat healthy, exercise daily, and feed your mind with positive thoughts. You can hire me one-on-one -on -one for coaching, personal training, or how to learn about nutritious foods and how they affect your body in a more positive way. Sign up for my free weekly newsletter at lisadwaskin.com or you can find me on Facebook at Body by Lisa or BBL Fitness is my Facebook page. I post daily tips on nutrition, fitness, and feeding your mind with positive thoughts. Don't wait for tomorrow to become healthier and happier. Do it today. My website again is lisadwaskin.com. That's D W O. S K I N dot com. You are transforming your mind, body, and spirit with fitness professional and life coach Lisa Dwoskin. You can call in at any time, toll free, 1 800 889 0267 to speak with Lisa. Now let's get back to this week's show. Okay, we're back. Go ahead, Freddie. He has a commercial he's going to read for us. Well, Lisa, we want to thank OG Gems. A traditional family business in the gems business is hard to find in today's fast corporate world. Handmade and creative stones from every part of the world have made OG Gems 
OG Gem, say that three times real quick, a specialty <laughs> in our community. They use jewelry to express their fashion and personal traits, and now they share their long family tradition with you. Visit their website, www.oggems.com, and see the jewelry they have to offer, making people feel happy, confident, and beautiful. That is their business. Very good, Freddie. Yay. So just I that. just... I want to take a moment to thank Freddie for everything he's done for me. He's my producer, and his website is amp2tvproductions.com, right? Amp2.tv Productions, yes. Okay, so anybody out there who wants to become a star like me, <laughs> or Rocky, or Danny, no, really, Freddie, thank you for everything. You've put me on so many radio shows. Then I got my own radio show on AM. Now I'm on FM. So you're going to be on television. Exactly. That's and I'm still here. here. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for that. Okay, back to the superstar over here, Rocky. So Sheila, lovely Sheila, your wife is over here. And I would like to say that she told me to ask you a question about what was the last thing your father said to your mother when he was dying in the hospital about you? Was it take care of me? To take care of you. That was his very last words. In them days, we couldn't get go to see him unless he was 16 years old. I wasn't 16. Aww. I was 12. But do you remember him very well? Like I, like, I see him every day. Oh, that's beautiful. I remember when he put his hand on top of my head. And getting back to that, there was a guy living next to us that lived by himself. Nobody knew how old he was. He had no running water, so he would come over and and get buckets of water from us right. and he would stay with us at night because sometimes you know in Canada it got 40 50 below zero wow freezing and I came in one night and he was sitting in the rocking chair by the kitchen mm. and he's rocking back and forth and people don't believe this but I'll take this to my grave and I turned the light on he was sitting there and I said well Mr. Desert, why are you, you know you're not in because we had a couch by the, by the in the kitchen. I said, why are you not in bed? He said, I was just waiting to see you, Sonny. He always called me Sonny. So beautiful. He put his hand on my head, and he said, may luck always be go with you. Aww. He walked across the field. The next day, he died. Wow, amazing. Yeah, and my father's last words were told my mother to take care of me. Beautiful. Now, And I think that's what gives me something inside. I still think about this 50 years later. Of course, that I see in your face, you feel I it too, the emotion. Yeah. And you know, you really out of, are. Out of 10 boys, uh -huh. why would he pick me? Exactly, and well, because I'll tell you why. You're very, very spiritual, very, more than you probably even know. Because I see it, and I'm a very spiritual person. You're so in tune with your spirit, your soul. And the faith that you have. Now, do you get signs now from your father? Yes, like, I do. Like just little things just that you know. Just little things. He's there. I, he'll tell me something that's going to happen, and it happens. And what about dreams? Do you dream? I dream all the time. About him? Yeah. He now, wakes me up sometimes at night. And if I tell people that, they'll put me in a nut house. They'll think I'm insane. Okay, well, let me sound really nutty. And I know we have a caller. We're going to get right, right to you. Dreams. Really, you could talk to people who have passed on in your dreams. I have done that many times. For sure, and they give you messages in your dreams. And people out there might not believe it, but if you study about it, if you read books about it, you know that you really could get answers and communicate with spirits. My father told me when I was 10 years old, he said, you're going to be a professional wrestler. Wow, amazing. And had no wrestling on my mind, but to find out my uncle was a wrestler, but he was with the carnival. Anybody that could beat him in five minutes would get five dollars. Oh, but that's and, neat. and he never got beat. So maybe that his spirit went on into mine. Yeah. Of all, all of them, and I research. You know, we've done a lot of researching on my book. Right. And I was the only first ever Black Canadian champion. Mm. I'm the only Black Canadian inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame. Amazing. And I and I sit in wonder and ask myself, why is all this me when it could have been somebody else? Because it was your destiny. It has to be. For sure. I love it. We yeah. can talk about this for hours. Yeah. But let's get to this caller and then we need to get to your right. books and, and the movie. Right, and Danny has something he got to say. Okay, Eric, are you there? 
Okay, we lost him. Okay, I want to talk about... Eric, call back. We'll pick you up sooner. Sorry. That was a deep conversation about Very spiritual. Deep, and I, I love that. Bumps. And I that's why I love having you here, because you get deep into the core of your soul. And that's what I want this show to be about. Not superficial foo-foo. No. we got to get deep into belief and faith and mind, body, spirit. So let's talk about, you have three books coming out. Yes. And a, a movie about the book. Yeah, so tell gonna, us a little bit about it. Well, i got a guy that's writing, I think you met him? Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, Stuff. We we started off with one book, and when he he researched all the way back to the late seventeen nineties, mm -hmm. and it's, we have so much that we we have to put it into three books. It should be ready. I think he told you in three four months or two months. Two months it should be out. I'm working on a movie. I don't have it all finished yet, and I'm going to get some help, which I can need some. And my you know my boys in the movie industry, and I want to call it the Rain King, the Rocky Johnson story. I wanted to. Right from the start, all the way up until shows me today, shows me fading out, and my boy fading in as world champion. But I want the people to understand mm -hmm. what I had to go through for him to get where he's at today. I'm not talking about the movie business because I had nothing to do with that part. Right. But training him to make him a world champion, I that was my you know I trained him all for that. Right. And, but I wanted to let him know how hard it was for me. Yeah. And it was not easy for him either. No. So, so. the beginning of the book, are you going to get deep into ra oh, yeah. racism? and? Oh, I'm going to talk about the Being the first African-American. Yeah, I'm going to get I mean, it's the good and the bad and the ugly. Perfect. But the, what the most important thing is, it's all the truth. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. Right. I mean, I wrestled guys in them days where they paid me 300 mm -hmm. and paid my opponent 600 Yeah. Just on a racial basis. Yeah. But, you know, it never bothered me. Uh -huh. It made me stronger. Well, that's what I love when we talk about this particular subject. You don't have a chip on your shoulder Not a at bit. all. You let things go. You don't I let don't, things I bother you. I love everybody. If they don't like me, if they don't like my apples, don't shake my tree. Exactly. That's okay. perfect. Okay, we're going to... Do we have a caller? I see the phones are blinking, but I don't see a name. But Danny. I'm new at this, so... Okay. Dan, Danny has something to say. Let's take a caller, and then we're yep. getting back to your movie. Okay, caller, who's there? Caller, you're on the air. Eric, are you there? Eric, are you there? Hi, good afternoon. How are you? Hi, hey, Rocky, Eric. How are you? Hey, Rocky. Good. How are you? Hey, Hi. Rocky. I'm a big fan. Uh, during the 70s, I used to come to Miami Beach Convention Center and watch you uh, wrestle. Oh. What is your reaction to Blackjack Mulligan? I heard he's either... He just passed, passed. He just passed this morning about, oh. two, about two hours ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm still with the WWE, and they got in contact and told me. Yeah, he, he had a good life, but uh, he's been sick for three or four years. And he just passed on a few hours ago. How old was he? Right. He's he's probably between seventy three and seventy five. Oh wow! Because wrestlers never grow old; they just lie about their but age. But hey, at least that's a little older <laughs> yeah. than most of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> most of them from back then with right. all the well, steroids yeah, because and the all drugs. the bangs and and hits. You know, when Muhammad Ali did his story, and I helped with it, uh, just the head alone, he took over eight thousand punches. Wow. That's why he has Parkinson's today. That's amazing. So, yeah, That's I terrible. mean, it t your body takes a toll when you get older. Oh, and, well, and uh, all the drugs, the wrestlers, uh, Yeah, too. well, a lot of drugs. Let me explain that about drugs. And I was in that position, but thank God I never got on drugs and I never was a drinker. Yeah. I drank a beer now and then or a glass of wine. But I, but it, in my day, if you hurt your knee, they give you a painkiller and a shot. Mm -hmm. And the next day you took two. Mm -hmm. And the next day you took four. Then the next day you took six. Now you're hooked for life. Yeah, that's and that, that's what happens. And what most athletes, not only uh, wrestlers, no, but football all players, but basketball players. What about players. steroids? Why steroids do they all have because, to take the steroids? Because everybody wants to be bigger than the other guy. Gosh, but it's so dangerous. They don't care about that, but they pay for it 20 years later. Tell me the story. There was a funny story about the the Hulk and I think Hulk Hogan that they had like guy, a, a they had, bet. They had, yeah, I'm not gonna mention his name. Okay. I wasn't even gonna mention Hogan. Okay, name. wait. You let's did. not. I was say gonna it, say, though. should we not mention not, Hogan? I'll, 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 I'll tell you. Sorry about Hulk. Sorry, Hulk Hogan. I like you too. They had a they had a bet. 
30 day bet for $100. Mind you, these guys were making, this was in the 80s, they were making fifteen, eighteen thousand $18,000 a week. Yeah. They had a $100 bet who would have the bigger arms in one month for 100 bucks, And they measured them at the end of the, at the, end of the month, and their arms were both the same size. Wow, yeah. And they crazy. ruined their bodies. Look at look at the health. Look, I mean, Hogan's a great guy, don't get yeah. me wrong, but look at him. Right, no, I know I'm, the I mean, health. You know. Okay, we have another caller. Thanks for calling, Eric. He's gone. Oh, Next. Bill, are you there? Hi, Bill. Yeah, I'm here. Bill, Hello? are you there? Bill. Hey, Hi, Bill, you're on the Bill, air, Bill. We got about one minute before the show's over. Go for it. Rocky, in uh, basketball and football, 35 years old, you're considered old. How about in wrestling? What's a wrestler's... Uh, I would say gender? 45, but it's like anything else, like in boxing. They they never want to admit that they're old, and they never want to admit that they, they, that they quit. Luckily, I knew I woke up one day and everything was hurting, and I knew it was over. I would say between 45 to 48, it's time to get out. But a uh, lot of One more quick question. If you and your son were... Your son was a champion also, right? Yes, six times. All right. If you guys were at the same age, who was a better wrestler? You you, you can answer that. You, I don't even have to answer that for you. <laughs> I think you're a better wrestler. Thank I you. I think your son might be a better actor. Yeah, I taught him all he knows, but I didn't teach him all I know. Well, so we, uh, I used to watch you, and I think you're the greatest, and... Uh, Keep up the good work and stay healthy. Okay, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for calling, Bill. See, a lot okay, of people. Okay, bye bye. Bye. A lot of people saw the original rocker. Regional rock was sitting right. Of course, but he's a legend. That's the right. trailblazer, That's right. the man. Open okay, up. we got about two minutes, and I'm going to read something at the end, but I want you to say something to inspire people on Valentine's Day. <laughs> it doesn't have to be Valentine's Day. Always put it in your mind, I can. I never ever said, I can't. I can. A, B, C. Anybody can if they want to. I so get that. it in your heart that you're going to do it. Don't look at the guy that's got the eight damn black belt and you don't have a black belt, but get in your mind if you want it, you go out and you work for it. Yeah, the thing is, is having that positive attitude. I suggest everybody, and I'm not promoting this, I'm saying this on a true fact, everybody should re read Lisa's book. Aw, oh, thank and you. At my age, I still read it, and I still go over and over and over. I have a tape. I have many copies made from 1962, Martin Luther King's speech, I Have a Dream, and I still play that every once in a while. I love it. I love it. And I just would like to end with... Um, today is a day of love, so I'm going to keep it very simple. And a friend of mine wrote this to me this morning, Kali, on Facebook. Where there is pain, love. Where there is anger, love. Where there is fear, love. Where there is hate, choose love. More, more importantly and most importantly, love yourself. And like what Rocky said, believe in yourself. And I would like to say, I love you both, Sheila and Rocky. Thank you so much for being here and starting my brand new show off on a very, very top 10 my awesome pleasure. show. Anything. And thank you, Danny, for coming, my no brother. Problem. I love him too. No and problem. Freddie and everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today and starting your very own journey through transformation. Don't wait to get the perfect weight, the perfect mate, or the perfect job to become happy. Be happy today. Lisa will continue to help guide you weekly to become more mindful and to live in the now. Feed your body healthy and nutritious foods. Get your body moving and feed your mind with positive affirmations. With a positive